We've gone over some of the cases in which David and the law offices have been a part of, and today we're going to discuss a wrongful death freeway accident case. And um, I'll allow David to take the floor and explain more of what happened with this particular situation. All right. Well, this was, again, another tragic case that I was involved in that I handled with, in terms of helping the family. Uh, it was a wrongful death case. And what essentially happened was our client was driving a um, tow truck. And it was a rainy night. It was on and off. And it had drizzled. At the time of the accident, the contention was that the rain had stopped. But while our uh, client, who unfortunately passed away, and in this case he was survived by his wife and four children, was driving on the I'm trying to figure out. Oh, it was the I-60 freeway. He he was traveling on that freeway. He hit a spot where his vehicle lost control, hit the center divider, and the vehicle kind of became inoperable. And then here comes another super shuttle van that's coming from some distance away uh, who then collided into our client and just instantly killed him as a result of the collision. It was a pretty contentious lawsuit. They claimed that the super shuttle driver didn't have enough distance or time to be able to see our client whose vehicle was disabled on the roadway because the, that you know, there was no lighting, nothing whatsoever, because our client's vehicle was off. Uh, we were able to present through the police report that the lights were on, to witness testimony and everything else, that no, actually our client's vehicle was, although it was sideways, the lights were present that if the particular super shuttle van driver was paying attention, he would have been able to see the light and stopped in time, and that it was a matter of being inattentive and not paying attention, especially under the circumstances being that it had rain, and that speed was a factor. And luckily, the jury sided with our clients, the wife and the children, and ruled that the super shuttle driver was inattentive. And uh, based also on accident reconstruction experts, which we retained, they were able to reconstruct the entire accident based on the positioning of all the vehicles at the time of the incident and where the scuff marks, everything else, to show that, look, the vehicle was located here, lights were here, the super shuttle driver was able to see a good amount of distance and time, and had he been attentive, he would have been able to stop and avoid the collision. And that's one of the other good things that we can bring to the table as attorneys, especially some attorneys that are specialized in handling these cases. We have the right experts. We can get, retain the right experts who can reenact the whole accident for the jury and sometimes do an animation or describe it exactly as to what the distance is to where this driver, had he been paying attention, would have been able to realize, hey, there's a vehicle ahead of, t ahead of me that's stalled. I need to slow down or stop to avoid the collision. And so luckily, again, we were able to recover for the both the wife and the children that were left over for this tragic accident. 